All right, this is a an, an old M55, uh, probably around 1973. Uh, what I understand is it came from Jerry Tashwar. Uh, it used to be his vibraphone. And then it uh, he, he sold it to Ben Walland and Walland, uh, Ben Walland sold it to me. And it's a really, it's a really a nice instrument for such an old instrument. It's got some issues uh, that I'm going to repair. I just saw some new ones here that I didn't, that I'm gonna have to fix the cord. But also, you know, there's some, there's a uh, broken or damaged rail here, which will fix up real easily. And I had some uh, somebody ask me uh, on on the internet uh, on my website, how do you change the pad or how do you take the old pad off? Well, this is the this is an old Nico pad, so it's not the old felt pad, but it's pretty much the same kind of thing. It's got gunk all over it uh, when you pull the pad up. I'm going to pull this pad off. Basically, I, I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, you'll need a couple of different tools. I use mostly um, a scraper and this stuff called Goof Off right there. And then um, and I'll show you. I'll just get started on it now and then we'll find some other things. But I'm also going to show you eventually. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to upgrade this fiber. This fiber is going to be awesome. I'm going to put new uh, bar mounts on it. I'm going to fix that rail. And I will show you how to do all these things. So if you want to have some uh, much better bar mounts, uh, I'll show you how it's done. I'll also send you a tool to make that easier for you. Um, so the, and But right now I'm just going to work on the uh, damper pad. I'm just going to take this one off and, and uh, show you how to get all that stuff off. So this is Nico's old pad. The, the uh, felt pads are pretty much the same, but... Uh, as far as they have some glue that you got to get off of them. Um, let's see what's in, how this thing is made. Let's take this thing apart here. It's, it's, got, it's all taped together. We used to say it was kind of like a taco of muscle, made like a taco. It's got a, it's got a little bit of that gel inside of it, very small amount of gel. I wonder if it would work without the gel. But there's the gel. And, um, and then he wraps it like a taco with felt, a little thicker felt than I use, but I'm gonna do some experimenting with that also. And then, um, and tapes it. So, yeah, interesting. There's the, there it is. All right, so we got rid of that. So basically, you're just gonna put some of this goo on it. Goo, goo be gone, or goo off. Goo off is what this is. There's several different other brands. And I just kind of scrape it on here and let it sit in and do its thing. Use some one of these kind of scrubber th type things and break it up. And then you can just you know, scrape it. It's not really that hard. I'm showing it in here because it's where my, I have a, my tripods are here. And, but anyway, I mean, this, is, this stuff's coming right off. Nothing to it. So that's it. I mean, once you've got that, and you can you can experiment with uh, using your glass scraper. Or the, the thing about the gla grass, glass scraper is that sometimes it bites into the aluminum too much, and it makes it hard to use. So that's that's it. I mean, that's that's what you do. Oh, and uh, this stuff will probably you know take the paint off your. Right, let's find out. We'll stick a little bit on there and see what it does to the paint. Because this thing is going to look completely different when I'm done with it. I am going to, I, I my plan is, I'm going to, since uh, these things get beat up, I'm going to make it beat up. This is going to be the most beat up vibraphone, but it's going to, it's going to play better than any vibraphone around. Other than uh, maybe Harvey Price's, because I did his earlier. But it's going to play really nice. And... Um, Boy, that stuff's coming off really easily. So this stuff is this is the, this is easy. So let me see what it did. Did it take the paint off the instrument? Yeah, it is. I don't know if you can tell it, but it's definitely. So you want to protect your instrument. Uh, best thing would do would be to just uh, probably take the rail off and do it someplace in your garage. I'm just not that particular about the, the rails right now because I'm gonna I'm gonna strip them down. I'm gonna put take chains to them. I'm gonna take soldering iron to it. I'm going to burn them. 
I'm going to do all kinds of things to these rails so that they look, I'm going to call it the bruiser. And it's going to be, uh, it's going to be beautiful, I, I think. I like, I like things that are kind of like that and kind of messed up. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it look like a bruiser. All right, so let, let me, here's how you can simple take the uh, rails off. So that you, I think you can see how that's coming off nice and, yeah, it's coming off easily. Very easy, nothing to it. Just protect your floors and here, but here's what you should do. You should take that little knurled nut off of the bottom, push down on the damper, and turn that little nut that's on there. Do you know what that little nut is for? Back, back when I was a student, I think I was told that it was, or maybe I just thought it was for that, is for, um, if you don't want to use your pedal or something, you would hold it down and, so you didn't get that much. That's crazy. Why would anybody do that? That's not what it's for. I think it's to disengage your damper. I always disengage my damper when I'm not playing it. So you, you just you push the pedal down and you tighten this knurled nut down so that this thing isn't touching your bars when you're not playing it. That saves on the wear and tear of your damper and doesn't create those little... Uh, problem areas in your damper so anyway that's what you do you undo that thing and you just kind of squeeze these guys together a little bit pull that out the thing that comes off and oh, while we've got this out let's do this so oftentimes one of the problems that people have is a squeak or a sound from the spring it's it's an easy fix it's not a permanent fix but it's an easy fix that lasts I don't know, I'd say year, years maybe. And uh, basically what you do is you get a piece of felt, just a little piece of felt you can buy it at any fabric store. And then you just, what I do is I just put, make a slice in it or fold it. Make a slice here. Maybe even do it this way, fold it again. All right. Make a slice there so you got like a little X. That was my can of goo of gooby gone or goof off, whatever it is. All right, so so then you've got a little X in it. And then what I do is I just put it over the over the uh, holder here. Put the spring on it. Now there's felt between the metal. Then I can put that down there. If you think it might be on top, you can do the same thing on, on the top part. Let's see if you've got that in this camera. Yeah. So now you've got a piece of felt in there, and it doesn't squeak anymore. Okay? And that, that lasts quite a while. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a trick that lasts pretty good. And then you just put your knurled nut back on there. Little nut that goes on the bottom here. And... There you go. And then you've got that. I, I would put it on the top too, the top portion also. So you've got a little bit of felt on that. Anyway, just a little trick. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. All right, so I've already taken out a number of these, but I'll go ahead and show you how I how to replace the insulators. Let me make sure I've got a good shot of that. All right, yeah, I can do those right here. So uh, to take them off, just get a screwdriver. Don't be afraid of this thing. Screwdriver and pull those things off of there. And then to put the new ones on, it just takes a little bit of water, a little water and Dawn, a couple of drops or a drop or two or a drop of uh, Dawn dish detergent or any kind of dish detergent for that matter. And then you just put it on there and turn it. It's, it's easiest if you keep your hands dry uh, so that you can have friction to, to push it on with. And that's it. You can do your whole thing. And, and we sell those at uh, PiperVibe.com, the insulator replacements. And they are, if you think about uh, getting, going to uh, and ordering your own latex and cutting it yourself, please go ahead and do that. Um, you'll save a couple of pennies, but not much. And you'll find out that this stuff is hard to cut accurately. You'll have different sizes. You'll have little nips in it. I had to, uh, I, I tried a number of different ways. I spent money on trying to <laughs> fix up a rig that would cut them straight. Nothing I did actually cut them straight. And I found that the uh, a, a company that would sell them to me, so I had to buy, I had to buy 13,000 of these. So I bought 7,000 
of uh, the size that it fits the Musser M55, and I believe the, all their marimbas, everything Musser. And then I bought 7,000 that fits the Piper Vibe and the Piper Vibe Bar Mots because they're a little bit longer. So anyway, we have it all at PiperVibe.com, and I hope you'll keep in touch. Oh, let me finish up also by showing you how to pull these out. So we, I think we yeah, we pulled this out, right? We can, if, if you want to pull your bar mounts out, this these are the easy ones. The hook ones are easy because you can just do that. But the other ones, you, you have to um, use a vice grip. And it's still not hard, but you just basically hook your vice grip onto it and then just pull it straight up. Pretty easy. And they come right out. And then the, uh, the, the Piper, uh, the uh, shock absorbing bar mounts fit right into these slots. It's really easy. And I'll send a, a tool with you that will t tap it in. But I want to take that on to a different, um, a different video. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Keep in touch. PiperVibe.com.